from the time that you first whatever, got your hands on Mike McGlinchey to where he is now, how has he adapted most? And like, where? How do you feel about just the progress he's made and where his game is now? Well, I mean, Mike. My, you know, Mike's continued to work really hard at, at getting better. I mean, you know, we've talked about it before. Mike can be Mike's worst enemy. And uh, that's where I'd say the most improvements occurred. You know, there have been some bad plays, and and, uh, and and usually they don't, you know, one doesn't stack upon another. Sometimes they do. Uh, but, but for the most part, Mike's been able to reach a level of consistency that even though there are some plays he's not happy with, I'm not happy with, um, he has improved greatly from his first year till now. He works really hard at getting better. Is it is it perfect? It's not perfect by any stretch, but he's made gradual improvement every year. And my thing I'm most happy with is he's able to come off the field. I think last week was probably the exception. He was pretty upset with them after himself after the false start penalty, and uh, and then having another one after that was was not good. Uh, so that was probably the only time this season that it was probably a little bit more like it had been in past seasons. But for the most part, Mike's done a really good job of working through that, and that's allowed him to play more consistency because it's it's. As much as the game's a physical game, it's a mental game, and you have to be able to understand. You know, every, Trent said it before. I'll never forget um, when we were in Washington and we played against uh, Alden Smith here in San Francisco, and uh, we played him back in Washington. And Trent got beat for a sack, and everybody was making a big deal. And Trent said, "Alden Smith's a great player, and he's going to beat me sometimes. It's, it just happens." Joe Staley would always say, "If I blocked Alden one out of ten snaps in practice, I, you know, it's the same thing with Mike. No matter how good Mike is, there's there's they're good rushers on the other side. They're they're going to do good things. And last week's group was a really talented group, so it has you on edge throughout the game. You have to stay calm and understand each rep." lives and, and dies by itself and you, you learn from it, you build and you go on to the next rep and see how you can improve and get better and not let the bad overwhelm you. And that's where Mike's really improved, I would say more than anything. He had the first false start, then he had the second. Did he get it back together after that? He second? was fine after that. Yeah, he was he was good, but he was down. It wasn't the same. He, he was really down on himself and the game was pretty much in hand at that time. Uh, and so it was it was it wasn't as it wasn't terrible after that. It could have maybe been a little bit better, but it wasn't noticeable at the second one. The second one was the first one was was just purely jumping early. The second one there was there was a little pause in the cadence. It's not excusing. It's nobody else's fault but Mike's. Nobody else jumped. Uh, but again, there was there was with emotion there was a pause and there was a little bit more reason for it. But he was that was my point to him. You were a little on edge from the first one and so the second one it was you know you just get yourself back to zero let's go and let's get started it's 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 a challenge and every guy has it you know Aaron Banks has it in different ways it may not show up in a false start but it may show up in the way he sets for the next two series and I have to remind him hey dude let's get back to square one let's come come on remember what we talked about all week you know same thing with Spencer uh same all of them you know they all even Trent I'll say hey Trent now you're starting you're starting to look like this thing we talked about in the offseason you didn't want to do we got to get out of that and and everybody that's what the process of the game is that's why I think my one of my roles besides you know helping with the play calls and the things like that is to, to keep the guys on point to look at the pictures to watch them during the game to see what they're doing to talk about the fundamentals to keep them on on task so that we can continue to do what we plan to do during the game look at the pictures are they still images uh, yeah still images so it's uh, why you can get them any way you want but it's it's usually a, it's a snapshot just before the ball snapped and then just after the ball snapped. So you can kind of see, you see the lineup just before they snap it. And then once the ball snapped, you kind of can see the start of all the blocks. You kind of start to see, oh, were you on that guy or not on that? So you can, you can kind of piece it together. Plus, so I'm standing there and I'm watching it anyway. Then I've got Joe, my, one of my assistants standing next to me and I, I holler at him, hey, Joe, the left guard. Then we pop up and look at the replay board while we're listening to the next play call and see the replay board. Oh, shoot, the right tap, right down, McGlinchey. We've got to talk to him about that in that series. Then you confirm it with the pictures. You confirm it with the guys. You try to piece it together. So when somebody says, did you, you know, I love when we get on the plane after a road game. Are you going to watch the game? I said, no, I'm going to watch a movie. I'm going to eat ice cream and a hamburger here because I just watched the game. I was out there for four quarters and we pretty much pieced it all together. I don't, I, I'll wait till tomorrow to grade it. I've, I've just lived through it. You miss the days of the, uh, the Polaroids coming down on the fishing line? Uh, it's the same thing. It's just now all on our uh, surface. Yeah, everybody get a surface. Do you do that during the, when the, when the defense is out? Yeah, we go as fast as we can. Unfortunately, with our defense, if we have a 10-play drive, it might be three and out, and we got to, I don't have time to do it. I've caught, that's a lot this year. I've, I've really had to speed up the process. Our defense gets off the field pretty quickly. That's kind of how it was when I, in a couple places, Tampa and Baltimore, the defense was so darn good that you had barely have time to go through it. But I'm trying to go through it as quick as I can. The guy upstairs tells me what he sees. We've already pieced a little bit together. Hey, hey, uh, Jake, what did, did you did call the right? Th yeah, I called that guy. What happened on your A block? Da, 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 da. That's what it looks like. Okay, let's make sure we keep doing that. I think you're not, uh, whatever it is, I make the correction. So. Sorry. 
That's you right. mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I think it was after the Miami game, that you went up to, to Christian and Juice, and Christian's first reaction was, man, I, I could have done better. I should have done better. And you were like, you know, relax a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm curious with him, in, in terms of coaching him, how often has he already identified what he needs to do before you can even tell? Most times he has. I mean, he realizes I missed that or I didn't miss that. And sometimes he, he's like, why was that not better? It felt like there was, what could I have done different? You know, he'll ask. He'll ask, what did you see? And then a lot of times it's confirming, you know. Uh, again, I always tell these stories, but I remember with Warwick Dunn, these running backs, you got to be careful because they see, that's why they're great running backs. They have great vision. When I was coaching Warwick, I was trying to explain to him, hey, Warwick, now remember, we're going to get on that guy. Um, and we'll, we didn't get a guy blocked. And... Uh, I said, but we'll get him next time, so just trust us and keep pressing the land. And, and, and I said, is that what you're asking about? I said, no, 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 coach. He said, I'm not worried about that guy. I'm gonna, if you don't block him, I'll make that guy miss. I'm worried about the next guy. It was the next guy. It was a guy I wasn't even thinking about as a coach. It's like, as a coach, I'm thinking, well, we just got to get him blocked. And he's already said, no, that one's not tackling me. Now I'm thinking about, I'm going to make him miss now. What, what's going on with that guy back there? That's when I realized, man, you be careful what you dive into with these guys, how much some of them can see. And that's the way it is with Christian. You don't want to overcoach him and over, you know, but he's, the, he's hardest on himself. And there are times where we can help him a little bit. And there's other times where he sees it already. He's just looking for confirmation that what he saw was right or wrong. Are there some varies, uh, between Christian and Work? There are some. Yeah, there are some. Work was... Um, they're both slashers. They both have great quickness. They have good speed, right? Um, both great pass catchers. I mean, one of our best third down plays was run four guys vertical and tell Dilford just dump it off to, to Warwick on third and 10 and watch him make people miss and get a first down. Um, Warwick was, was a great player, and, and uh, I really respect and, and loved working with him. He was one of the, one of the sharpest. I say he and Trent Williams were the sharpest two rookies walking in the building that they had a, a football knowledge that was just they just saw the game at a pro level from the minute they walked in the building. And uh, and, War and and Christian, I, I see the same things in him. I'm a little bit different. I'm trying to remember Warwick back that far. But, uh, but yeah, both really, really great players. Debo Samuel back in practice. I'm just curious, what does that mean for the offense overall? Well, you know, every every time these guys come back, it's it's been great. You know, with it's been unfortunate they've been hurt, and we've been fortunate to win some games while they've been out. But you have a chance with him coming back. Whenever Elijah has an opportunity, if we can keep playing long enough, um, these guys get back in there. It just gives us more guys. You saw that you know Ray Ray has an opportunity to shine and and show what he can do and develop. Other players have had a step a chance to step up. With we talked about Ty a little bit earlier, and 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 so these guys it just gives other guys an opportunity. It's given Joe want a chance to get more reps so obviously we all know what Debo can do you guys have been here as, as long or you've all been here longer than me most of you and uh, know exactly uh, what these guys can do Debo is a real real uh, pleasure when when the time comes for him to play again it's really great to have him back I think you said a couple of weeks ago you didn't know tons about Brock Purdy because he, you know it's in the shadows but you've been doing this a long time I mean what, what have your impressions been as the weeks go on what he's doing. It's awesome. I mean, he's been, we've seen, right? The production has been outstanding. Uh, the, the, his, his demeanor, his poise, his leadership, his toughness because of the injury he sustained in the first game he was playing in. Um, all those things, he's, he's shown it all. It's like all of it. We've talked about other players, my guys, before we've talked about is that, so now it's what about what happens when you fail? Kyle said it before too. What happens when you get your butt kicked? And, and what happens when you have the bad game? Uh, you know, I hope that's, Next year, sometime. But uh, but whenever that time may come, you hope that the guys, uh, you know, they're able to play through it. That's that's the hard part. Though. And I've seen guys that have had great starts to their career, and, and they end up having great careers. You have other guys that hit the hit the rough patches. What for whatever reasons? A lot of times, it's not even your fault, or it is your fault. And and how do you bounce back from it? I think he showed a great deal. You know, that interception last week. You know, obviously he put the ball a little bit behind him. He'd say he could have been more accurate. Juwan probably should, could have caught it. But how do you respond from that? And I think he responded well. And, and that's going to be the true test. But everything you see, I mean, you, we all see the same thing. He's productive. He's running the offense effectively. He's He's not messing up. He's he's doing a good job, and and he's he's, he's an impressive kid. Oh, right, well, thank you guys. Price to kind of get back in the mix last week. It was good. It was good for him. He had a really good week of practice last week. He really was starting to um, the, the level of intensity that he practiced with his his attention to detail. Uh, he knew he was going to have some ops this week, and so he really performed well. There's always stuff that you have to clean up, but we were real happy with his performance. This is the guy Max Crosby presents you guys. Problem. I mean, he's he's one of the best players we faced all year. I think uh, Kyle might have mentioned earlier in the week that Aaron Donald and this guy probably present the most problems. He's 
presents problems rushing the passer. He presents problems in the run game. He uh, rushes the passers, you know, as well as most of his elite edge rushers in the league. He presents a unique style. He's hard to get his hands on. In the run game, he's kind of like J.J. Watt a little bit in that he, uh, you know, he's constantly sw he can swim around blocks and still make plays. So it's not it's not it's not only that he's really talented and really good. It's unconventional. So you don't see it every week. So that that does create issues for whoever has to block him. So you have to come up with plans and things you want to try to do to 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 limit the amount of opportunities he has to to exhibit all that stuff. Game plan against a lot of great defensive ends, pass rushers. Does Bosa remind you of like a specific, a specific guy. You know, he doesn't because Nick's so unique. His, you know, his size and everything. You, you guys see him walking around. He doesn't. It's not this imposing figure, but his lower body strength, his flexibility, how hard he works at his craft, uh, his attention to detail and everything that he does. It, 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 the size and all that. I mean, it's. He doesn't really remind me of anybody. He's just. Absolutely. I guess, I guess, you know, I think of it and he doesn't rush like those two guys. But when you saw Robert Mathis and Dwight Freeney, they didn't look, they're not, you know, these giant guys either. They're, so I won't say he's like them, but from a stature standpoint, he does remind you a little bit more of those types of rushers. Uh, but he just, it's just really hard. Like we just was, was asked about Max, you know, you get your hand, it's hard to get your hands on Nick and, and, and he doesn't stay blocked for very long. So he definitely is right in that class of all the elite rushers that I've seen through the years. Shorter uh, pass rushers more difficult in a way because they, they I don't know, can get underneath a, a taller blocker, have better leverage than anything. Well, that's their, that is theirs. That's where Jonathan Ogden had trouble with Freeney is that when he would dip down at the top of the pocket, Jonathan was 6'9". It was really hard for him to get his hands down that low. Uh, and so that is, and then there's other reasons why being shorter isn't as good. And then the, But yet, you know, Max is long and, and lean and has great length and, and makes it difficult to get your hands on him in a different way. So it's just, it's just each guy's a little bit different. So they take advantage of whatever their size, stature, skill set is.